Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another Flashback Friday game. This time it is round 5 of the 2018 SCABL season and it's Hobart taking on Geelong at the DEC and uh, thanks for joining us everyone and hope you enjoy the game. But first off I'll introduce our co-commentator Ian who's been helping us out for, throughout the isolation period and now with restrictions lifting we won't be doing as, as many as we uh, go along because things get back to normal Glenn and um, I think yeah, we'll all we'll be back to being busy, but uh, Glenn, let's uh, welcome to the coverage. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, it's really good the news that basketball is going to be back for everybody, juniors, seniors, and the Chargers team will be able to get train on court as well as that's uh, right. Other than the um, fantastic, uh, what could you say, the fantastic preseason stuff they've been doing fitness wise. Absolutely, so yes, you can see a lot of that on Chargers TV, by the way. Yeah, it's been really good, and I think it just shows the professionalism of the Hobart Chargers now that they've involved. Yeah, you know, such a good sporting. Uh, I think they've got a physio as well now. Yes, Nick Nick, Nick Wilson, who's a sports physiotherapist. Um, Michelle Chopping has come on as strength and conditioning coach, and of course, all Robics have come in and sponsored the team once again, a long term sponsor of the club, and um, given the guys uh, free use of all Robics in That's town. That's awesome, isn't it? And like mm. you know, I'm I'm looking forward to meeting. All of those people, obviously Michelle I've met, mm -hmm. but um, I'm looking forward to getting involved as well once we're back on court. And um, Yeah, so it's, it's pretty exciting times and I know that Anthony Stewart, Matty Bennell, Mark Benevick, assistant coaches and myself are all really keen to, you know, have the longest pre-season ever and yeah. really develop the players and you know for next year so they're ready to go. And uh, with, with some great supports on the outside for the Hobart Chargers. Absolutely. And, of course, stay tuned on our social media uh, throughout the Hobart Chargers and we'll have further news coming to hand when the boys hit the court. Also, too, with the ladies as well. Uh, but for now, we'll take you to the DEC and let's go for Hobart. Take it on Geelong. And referee throws that one up and we are underway. Hobart going to the right of your screen and control the tip. Trey Nichols with the ball now and but gives it off to Moller as Hobart look to score here on the opening possession. Moller working his way baseline. Backing down there, it looks like it's Davis. Masunda is open for three. That's flat. And rebound by the Supercats as they come down the floor. That was a really good play from Hobart there. Just a the teamwork there from Moller. Got Trey, um, Terry Masunda. Open as much as he could be, but unfortunately the shot just didn't drop. So Gatlin, now he's Nathan Herbert, the veteran of the league. Uh, back to him. Pulls up for a jumper, that's short. And Nichols with the rebound as Hobart come down the floor now. And here's Moller once again. Masunda, yeah, go Glenn. I was going to say, some big boys in the Geelong team, hey? Oh, they're, they're very big, <laughs> both teams are, as Moller puts up the shot. Foul off the ball, looks like it. That's on Jamie Bed, uh, Bedbed. So Hobart to get on the baseline. It's going to be a good battle inside with Zach, Zach White against Marlow Hicks. Uh, Zach White's a very consistent player for the Hobart Chargers. And Muo out of bounds. And Geelong to get it back. And of course the black curtain there, folks. If you think our screen's blocked out there by the black, it's not. It's a black curtain that's covering... Um, half the grandstand there at the DEC, so don't get too confused there. So Demarcus Gatlin coming down the floor here. He's been a very good play in the SCABL for the last few years. And now Marlow Hicks, the big fella. Now Herbert, Herbert putting a fake on Muir and takes him on. It wasn't a bad option because he's drawn a foul out of it and he'll go to the line. And that's a really good matchup for Geelong to have against Nathang Mu, who's not known for his defensive output compared to, I guess he's such a good offensive player that his defence gets behind the herd, it had him up in the air and he drove well, got the foul and he's at the line for two shots. Nathan Herbert, a veteran of the league and of course a former NBL player himself was able to get some time with the South Dragons back when they were in the competition Glenn and uh, got his opportunity and and now really just, you know, he's Proving that once again he he's a solid player in this league, and he, you can see the class that he's got. Like you know, I've seen him play a few times, and uh, you know, he's lucky enough to play with South Dragon. But you know, it's really good to have that caliber of player as he picks up a steal here. Turnover, he pulls up for the three, can't get that to go. Muir can't reel that one in, 
And he takes out our president there, Brett McKay, who's sitting in his own box. And uh, Geelong to get it back. So, not a bad little crowd in here tonight. As um, we get a crowd building up as we go along. Herbert, just to kick it out here to Davis. And to Medbev. Herbert. Now, Davis once again, baby, hook shot is good. Very good shot. Great defence. Craig Miller, there's not much more he could do on the defensive end. But, uh, yeah, fantastic finish. Nichols pulls up from the top of the key. Can't get that to go. Geelong up by, I think, at least three or four here. As Gatlin tries to go for it. Can't get it to go. One of the foul referees didn't see it that way. Hobart come down the other end. Here's Masunda. Now Moller for the two-hand jam. And Geelong are a bit upset by that one. Obviously, they thought there was a, a big arm foul as coach Leon O'Neill just sort of is uh, letting the referees know that they may not have seen that one. But referees can't see everything, same as you know, players make mistakes as well. So, But a good finish and a good turnaround for Hobart and the momentum's now with Hobart. So Geelong need to really get a good basket here and get the momentum back on their, on their terms. Davis decides to go for an early three. Two-piece of the rim without success. Muay comes down the floor now, trying to get through Gatlin, putting on some moves. Get your skates on here as Muay puts it up. Can't get the go. Good defensive play by uh, Gatlin. Davis there to pick up the scraps. Nichols also involved in this. It's a bit of a ping-pong battle, Glenn, but the ball comes back with Geelong. Jamie Vedded for threes. Long, who's also a veteran in this league. Ball goes out of play. Stewie Ford came off Davis, but... Uh, referee Andrew Johnson saw it the other way. Yeah, and I think like you know the nerves are gonna and the ring and the a bit of probably a rust as well is gonna pop out in the first few minutes of this game, which it has already. You know, I think both teams will settle down and play some good structured basketball as the game goes on. Oh, nice pass there by Herbert to Davis once again. Davis with that hook and not getting that one to go. Masunda down the floor here now, putting on some moves over Gatlin. Can't get that to go. Hicks with the rebound back to Davis. Ball goes down the floor. Whistle in the background. And I think that's on, was it on Craig Moller there? I could hear nine. There through, through our headset, Glenn. It might have been. I think it was. It, oh, I'm not sure if it was Trey or referees. Obviously talking to Anthony Stewart, so I'm not sure what's happened there. But it might have been a tech foul by the looks of it. I'm really not sure what happened there. It was a tech foul. Yeah, so sure. yeah, I reckon so, it's oh. a technical there. Nave Herbin taking the free throw. And gets that one to go. And I don't believe it might. Craig Moller doesn't seem to be too involved in that conversation with the refs. I'm not sure if it was Trey Nichols or Nathan Moo that may have had the, order, the, mm. the issue with the referee in that case. But the referees, like, you know, they want to control the game from the onset. And if players disrespect and say anything untoward a referee, well, they're going to get pinged. And, uh, yeah, we don't want that in the league. So good refereeing there to, to get on top of stuff straight away. Another whistle in the background. Now, unfortunately, we, we haven't um, zoomed into what's going on. So... We'll just, go, we'll just go with whatever there, Glenn, and we'll continue on. Um, something to pick up for next year's filming <laughs> for Chargers yeah. TV. Definitely something for the so camera. Whoa. As I need to really... Uh, Davis, <laughs> Davis gets it to go. I will be talking to my cameraman next year <laughs> for live broadcasts. Making sure that doesn't happen again. Apologies there, folks. Muo down low as we reset ourselves here. Zach White for threes. Just long. Will that drop? No. He got a lucky roll. Ball goes out of play. And we'll go to Geelong. And I think it's fantastic just to see. You know, we, we looked at the, the box that Brett McKay has Brett McKay, with McKay Timbers. And now he's obviously yeah. gone into the president role. After That's right, just a, and, uh, and an overall here, Glenn. So I hope they're going to get the ball back. Yeah, so it's really good. And, and I'm really looking forward to a lot of these sponsors coming back on board. And I know the, the Hobart Charge is such a community team. And you know, so they'd be out in the community now that, you know, although there's no games in 2020, they'd be looking forward to getting all their sponsors back and getting out in the community as we, as we do. So... Pretty exciting times again now in Hobart, especially we've got basketball back on. Yes. Muo once again goes for three. Can't get that to drop just yet. Nathan Herbert goes cross-court here to Meddev again for three and gets it to go. Jamie Meddev with a three. And that's a nice, beautiful pass there. 
from her, but he just saw the Hobart defence wasn't really paying attention to Meddev and he got it over to him for a nice open shot. So wide. And down low, here's Moller. Yeah, Moller pulls up himself. Can't get that to go. Hicks with the rebound. Hicks gives some ball carrying duties of his own. Now Herbert inside of Hicks. Good two-man game. Ball got the uh, ball got blocked and goes out of bounds. Yeah, it's good to see Marlo Hicks. He must be about six foot nine, six foot eight, and as solid as a basketball player can be, bringing the ball down the court. So it's good to see the multi skills that he has. And he's Gatlin and gets that one to go nicely for him. I think Hobart will probably look at calling a timeout. It seems to be Geelong are sort of doing whatever they they want to do at the moment. So they don't really need to get a bit more structure, especially in defence. Like they've got the offensive firepower, but the defensive end, they've got to slow Geelong down. So Nichols, a couple dribbles and pulls up and gets it to go. It's not too often that Trey Nichols misses a shot from that range. He's got a beautiful 45 shot. So. And again, great teamwork from Hobart. So Gatlin with another drive, can't get it to go. Good contested possession there by Moller. Now Meddev again for three. He's long on the shot. Gatlin saves it, but ball went out of play. Buzzer in the background. And substitution being made. Cam Brown coming in. And Tim Misunda looks like he's going to have a rest. That's a good stuff there. Cam, Cam Brown brings a lot of energy into the into the Hobart side. Like, you know, he's one of the one of those players like a Warwick mm -hmm. Giddy of the Melbourne Tigers. If the ball's in the ground, you know, he'll jump on it. Yeah, so he's really, he does all the little things for the team to help them. And turnover here is Medneb. Now Her uh, Herbert, oh, that was Blickarp's then rejected by Zach White. Massive block there. Now Muo putting on some moves. Muo pulls up and finally gets that one to go. Man, Feng Muo hits the scoreboard. And Geelong want to be careful that the Feng Muo does not get on fire because he can really light it up and, and did so many times in the Hobart Chargers strip. So the ball going through sets of hands here for Geelong. Now down to Hicks. Hicks over Brown. That's a bit of a mismatch when you think about it. Blickhalves for three and gets it to go. They can definitely shoot this Geelong team and it's, they've been known to be such great shooters over, over many years of their time in the league. So a lot of Victorian teams they are. It's great to see just how skilled some of these uh, local local Australian players are in this league. Oh, absolutely it is. It's great to see the local talent on show here throughout the SCABL competition and of course in, also too in NBL 1 as we now uh, in 2020. Okay. It's really stepped up hasn't it? It uh, certainly has. Level of, uh, and it's fantastic to watch. Yeah. As Muo knocks down another three from long range. So I'm sure Geelong will want to as we, I just said before, if he gets hot, they don't want it. They want to make sure they've got a hand on move, make him bounce it, make it hard for him. And Nathan Herbert with the response. Now this is a, like another shootout at the OK Corral, as we, we've <laughs> That's seen right. many times. So. Nichols to join in the party, yes, sir. <laughs> and Trey Nichols had a fantastic season in 2018. He did. Like, you know, he was very close to MVP as well That's as right. Craig Moller, I think. That, that yeah, probably... Craig Moller got MVP, I can tell you, that year. As for the charge. Yes, for the charges. As Davis goes down low, it was Simon Connor who got the Siebel MVP. Um, as Davis, again with that running hook, and gets that one to go once again for him. He's got a nice little left-handed shot. He's got a nice couple of baskets in already. Oh, Moller, good vision to Cam Brown. Great pass. And that's, that's Really good court vision, but also smart, smart play by Cam Brown just to just to get under the basket, no one on him. So, and Moller is a very good passer, and he'll hit an open player. So Med Dev down low here to uh, now Herbert, and again similar play action this end of the floor blend yeah, as Hicks gets to Very exciting. Certainly, this court is now going shot for shot after Hobart were a little bit slow to get off the blocks. They finally found their group as Muo. Trying to go over Blickarp's and he skips it to Moller. Can't drop. Good energy there by Cam Brown to get that rebound. Now Moller works his way in over Hicks, and Hicks was late with the contact, and Craig Moller to go to the line. And that's a very good call. Like, you know, Craig Moller got up in the air. Hicks obviously you know, wanted to put a body on Moller, and he knew that he'd bowed and he made it hard. It would have been an, an, 
a straight two points had he had not have fouled. So he's making Craig Moller earn it from the line. As Marlo Hicks now comes out of the game, and uh, he he had a pretty good first quarter. So it's you know it's, it's the standard of this game is really good. Geelong are a class act, and it's going to be great to see if they can maintain it with eight players. They bring in eight, only eight players on the road trip by the looks of it. Uh, give me a second here. Two, yeah, four, eight, eight I've got here. Nine. They had nine. Oh, did they? One, one didn't, one didn't play. Oh, okay. So there you go. So Blickup's now with the ball here, and Moller was able to get a hand in passing lane, intercepted Nichols. Now Moller, good two-man game down the tran transition floor, and well, Moller got fouled in the process, and will go to the line for one. Fouls on Herbert. And Herbert tried to put his hand in there. I don't think he was, he was hoping the referee didn't see that little slap there, but he's just gone over the referee and said, mate, did I get him that hard? But it looked like it from here. So, And a great two-man game from Moller and Trey Nichols. They play well together. And, uh, I they don't mind who scores as long as one of them scores. So they've got the three-point play. And Hobart have really stepped it up since uh, probably the first two or three minutes where they looked at, you know, they started off a bit slow, but... Davis misses the two there. Brown with the rebound. Now Muo coming up the floor here for the Chargers. Muo gets through Meddeb. It makes it easy as you like, but couldn't get that to stick. And then gets a second opportunity. He wants a foul. Referees are still not giving him a call. And oh, I didn't see any fouls Mewo, there either. And Muo just keeps on keeping on here. As Geelong come back down the floor here now. Herbert. <laughs> Interesting there, stuff by me. Nathan Urban knocks down to two. So the thing moves probably going to get a flopping morning in a minute. I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> by the sounds of it, Nichols, and oh, then a nice work pass. to Sack White, and the foul was drawn. So uh, two shots for Sack White. We've seen some really good teamwork here at, uh, from both teams, and I just think the the sub that Anthony Stewart made with Cam Brown coming in was was a good one. Terry Masunda had a had a great go when he was on the court, but. Just the energy Cam Brown has brought into the game. It's the other subs that, you know, coach, that's why the coaches are so good and, you know, they make the right decisions because, you know, Cam Brown has done a fantastic job um, thus far. And, he, you know, I'm not sure if he's going off now. I've said that, but I think he's, he's just taken his armband off. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it's just... And, you know, the, both benches are really strong, so it's going to be good. And that might be a big part of the game as to how the benches... Uh, impact this game. Geelong only having running eight players, and you know they've got a fantastic first fight. But whether their bench can can come on and help them as well, will be interesting to see. And yeah, substitution be made. He's so quite's going to come off for a breather, and Geordie Hargrave coming in for the first time tonight. And another energy player, Geordie Hargrave is like you know he um, he's been in the league now for a few years. This is probably his second year, I think, 2018. And here's a turnover. Trey Nichols goes upstairs oh, yeah. and throws that one down. And the crowd is pumped on that one. Certainly is. Hobart, we have a mini press at the moment. It's been working quite well. Gatlin goes himself, draws a foul. That's going to be on Geordie Hargrave. And Demarcus Gatlin will be at the line. And I think Anthony Stewart just said to Geordie Hargrave, yeah, rather than try and get a steal, just contain and stay in front of the player. So Geordie, unfortunately, got next to him, and then yeah, he, he fouled. It, it was going to be a foul. So that's Stewie, that's good coaching there, and Stewie's just letting you know, mate, you probably didn't, your defence wasn't as good as what we know it can be. So next time down the court, let's show us what you can do. So Gatlin knocks down the first. He's a handy little player, Gatlin, isn't he? He certainly is. And it's been a very handy um, asset for the Geelong Supercats over the last few seasons and um, certainly showing why he's one of the premier players in this league. So Hargraves with the ball now. And so Hobart have a bit of a younger line-up on the floor. Nichols working his way through, putting on some moves. Gets through Herbert, beautiful vision and great pass once again to Cam Brown for the that, two. Yeah, that was a great pass and Cam Brown's a really good finisher under the basket. Mm. Like, you know, he doesn't get enough credit for his offensive output because he's such an all-round player and, he, and he's not one that looks to shoot first. He'll, he'll pass it off, but he's a great finisher. Lickarves for the long two. Can't get that to go. Hargraves to be trying to come in for Mark of the Year. Here's, uh, that is just 
uh, McKinry that went there and got fouled. He'll go to the line for two. I was just looking at something else here. Glendis, with where the assists could be at in his first quarter. I think Hobart had at least three or four already. Yeah, they've had some really mm. good assists between Moller and Trey Nichols. McKinry misses the first. And this is a really tough... Like, these teams, are obviously, you can see the class of these two teams while they're up in the top four. Oh, you know, absolutely. There's a lot of talent on the floor. And you know, the fans of Geelong and Hobart are pretty lucky to get to see this talent week in, week out. That, that's right, Glenn. Absolutely. Meanwhile, down the floor, Moller to Hargraves gets it to go. And that's a great finish from Jordy Hargraves. So, you know, he, it's just a just reward for, the, for Craig Moller's pass. So... Jordy Hargrave's just got to probably work on his defence a bit more. I think he fouled him again there. Yep, and Gatlin gets it to go. And I, as our camera just waves off here. But Gatlin, great drive to the bucket. And he'll go to line for one. I should mention there, there are some travelling supporters um, here tonight as well too, Glenn. Uh, Geelong do always bring a, a little bit of a, 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 a travelling crowd with them to the Tassie road trips because... It's always a highlight on the ECABL calendar for all the Victorian clubs. So yeah, no, that's great to see. And I remember, like you know, even when um, I was down at Kingston for a few games last year, but obviously with the Huskies, the, some teams brought their their families and friends along, and it was just great to see. As Moller misses the half quarter there for the quarter time buzzer, but a very entertaining first quarter. Sees Geelong up by one, Glen 28-27. Yeah, no, that was, a, that was a fantastic quarter. That was, that's sort of the basketball you want to see. However, I think the coaches will really get into their players now. There was a couple of things that were a bit sloppy uh, defensively, I think from Hobart's point of view, that I think they can work on. And, but Geelong really, you know, they, they took it at Hobart and they had a great first quarter. Marcus Gatlin trying to open up scoring in the second quarter. Can't get that to go from three. Now here's Muo, puts on a bit of a step. Backs down, Nichols open, just long. Moller with a good eye board. Now Masunda. Will Nichols have another bite at the cherry again? No, he won't. Ball winning swings around here. Now inside to Moller. Shot clock at four. They need to get it up. Masunda needs to do something quick. Foul on the play. And that's going to be on Davis. And with the shot clock going you know, so low, then Geelong wouldn't be happy that they fouled. Yeah, with how many seconds was it? Was it was about Probably four or three to go when Tyrion put that to the floor. Yeah. So Nichols. Now Moller. What about it? Goes cross court. White for three. Can't get that to go. That went in and out. Davis with the rebound. And now Geelong come down the floor here for Gatlin. Gatlin thinking about what he wants to do. Backs down. Tyrion was Sunday then. And Terry Masunda is a fantastic defensive player, so I can you know, he oh, nice take on any challenge from... Nice pass to Muo, and Muo gets set to go after a little bit of a 180 spin there. Yeah, so like that was great defence and it turned into a, a nice two points off it, a nice two offensive points for Hobart. So Absolutely. Credit to Trey Nichols as well too, just coming in to help Terry on that defensive play. Now shot goes up by McKinry and gets it to go. Great shot there. No, that was Christian Rocky. Apologies, folks. Christian Rocky knocks down the three. And that was a big shot as well, under pressure. So it's, um, yeah, the, play, the players are really, you know, giving it, making the crowd enjoy and, earn, you know, and enjoy the money that they paid to come and watch this game, I guess you could say. And you know, Zach White tips it in where Moller went off glass and that did a lap of honour and then looked like it popped out and then White was there for the tip. And Leon O'Neill, the coach of Geelong, really wants his players to box out then. I think he made mm. it home to him. As Davis knocks down the two there on a tough drive to the bucket. Here's Nichols. Wraparound pass, and that goes into the fans. The idea was there, except there was no player there. That's right. No one, no one there. And he might have seen a blue shirt in the... In one of the boxes there. Possibly, of course, they can. The fans can get ripped, ripped with a jersey. And Trey Nichols, you know, he, he doesn't turn the ball over very often either. So, uh, you know, we'll give him a unluckiness for that one. And an offensive foul's been called. Davis, really aggressive on the on getting to the basket, but that has been waved away. Lucky Boucher coming in for the first time. As Mafeng Muo, he's another rest. very talented young Hobart player, and Lucky Boucher. Mm. He's probably got one of the biggest leaps in uh, Siebel and uh, probably around Australia at the moment. 
in all for all forms of NBL, Seville, NBL One. Like Absolutely, we're a lot of talent. We're looking forward to seeing Lockie Boucher play next year in NBL One, Glenn. We're, Absolutely, um, we're hoping he gets a bit of court time. So Masunda into white and bumpity bump. And with Lockie power. Boucher, he's actually got a he's got a really good all round game as well. Yes, so I think Anthony Stewart's looking forward to uh, Lockie having playing a, a really big role in the 2021 Chargers team. Oh, absolutely. Um, we, we keep in a um, bit of a, an eye on what t what the team is doing, Glenn. As you, as you well know, Anthony Stewart has opened up the camera access for us, and it, it's certainly going to be very interesting to see uh, compared to what he did in 2018. So I'll be really interested uh, to, to make that comparison next year. Craig Moller from, well, that was from Glenorchy. Uh, can't get that one to go. Now, foul on the play. See what's going on here, and it's really good. Yeah, like you know, yeah, but as I sort of say, like you know, as an assistant coach for the Chargers now, that that Anthony Stewart just wants to develop these young blokes. Like you know, he yeah. said they've had a few years where they've they've done their you know their traineeships. You know, That's their right. Mm. And now, like you know, he's he knows how good these kids are, and he just wants to put the right players around them, and like you know, really put another championship type team on the floor. For, Hobart, for the Hobart fans to uh, be able to watch every week. Christian Rocky goes up for the three. That missed everything. So it's an air board. It's a rarity to see around here. As Nichols comes down the floor with, with it now and surveys his options as he works through a bit of traffic, goes over the top and gets it to go there on the running layout. That's a tough layout for a guy who's not six feet tall. <laughs> yes. Tough layout. And he's done it time and time again. So, you know, Trey Nichols really did when he was in the Siebel competition, really, uh, it was an excitement machine. And, like, you know, teams, didn't matter whether he was in opposition teams, it, they'd still be in awe of some of the plays that he made when he was on the road. So it's just great to see. Like, Hobart does put an entertaining game on, but Trey Nichols was right up there as one of the most most entertaining guards I'd seen in this 2018-year season. So Geelong the restart here. As Herbert puts up the two, just long, and foul, looks like a foul beyond Marlow Hicks. Referee's been very good this evening, um, very consistent both ways, so coaches would be enjoying that, and you know, the players appreciate the consistency. That's and I, right. And as we've talked about a lot, the referee's been at such a high standard, so credit to to the people above that, that run the referees in NBL1, Siebel, and also NBL now as well, so. And Trey Nichols there with a, with a good idea. Sack White just wasn't ready for that and missed everything. But Trey Nichols very um, doing good with the ball there. Now Geelong making their way through. Hicks now to Gatlin. Gatlin. Yeah. Uh, that's Rocky. Yeah, there's a... I'm just getting a little, I'm just slightly just getting a bit lost with, between Rocky and McKinry. I oh, will get there eventually, folks, so bear with us. As They're all big and tall they and all have dark hair. <laughs> it, it certainly does. Uh, so it is um, Rocky to get us underway here. He's going to pass it in. As is Herbert, now Hicks, down low here to Gatlin, one on one with Masunda. Gatlin does like this matchup. Goes over Masunda, can't get anything to go. And Masunda's played some really good defense. I know. It's, it's a poor, uh, Zach White it's turned Zach it White. over. Yeah, it wasn't great pass there by Zach White. It wasn't a great pass. I think it was at Herb. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, Herbert, three. Knocked, Herbert knocked down the three. So, made him pay. It's Nichols. Now Moller. Masunda for three. Just can't get that to go. A lot Hits. of arc. Yeah. Curry puts on his shots. We've got a layup down the other end. Oh, oh and it's a missed layup. Rocky couldn't get that one to go. And now all of a sudden, Moller. Nichols pulls up for three. Just long. Rebound by Herbert. And Geelong were lucky to come out of, out of getting this ball back around a basket, being scored by Hobart mm. then after missing a layup. So, yeah, that's a sort of Geelong. It wouldn't be too often that, that a player of that, that caliber would miss a layup like that. Um, as Hobart just need to capitalise on their defensive rebounds. Anthony Stewart, I'm sure, would not be happy with that. And I'd say a timeout. Yep, timeout, Glenn. It would have been to Hobart because Geelong have got a five-point lead. 38 plays 33 with 5.19 remaining in the second. 
So again, I think it's just basic stuff that I'm sure Anthony Stewart is going to talk to his players about and boxing out. Like you know, yeah. it, it's everyone boxes out before they go. Like you know, Stewart and drilling that into the to the players at training. Sometimes people ball watch those. Yeah. Um, and with Anthony Stewart being such an offensive player, is when he played, you know, it's really good to see that he focuses on the defensive aspect as a coach because he, his, I guess his philosophy as a player was I score more than my defensive player, we're going to win. Whereas here, like, you know, he knows defence actually does win. So. Yes. And when Stewie's not happy about the defensive pressure that his team puts on, he certainly lets his team, his team know. That's right, Glenn. We've, we've seen that in the past before. We know how animated Stewie can get at times. Um, that is certainly the passion and the love that, that Stewie has and uh, for his coaching and uh, and developing his players. Yeah, definitely. Is. Like, you know, he, he really does get the best out of his players. And, like, you know, he, he gives respect, but he deserves yeah. he deserves effort. Like, I that's think that's right. the biggest thing. He said, you know, I don't care if people are on the court for one minute or 48 minutes or 40 minutes. As long as they give 110% and the defensive end, defence wins games. So, um, so I think that was a really good time out. Uh, time to take a time out. Hobart are down by five points and hopefully from Hobart's perspective they'll be able to lift that defensive pressure. However Geelong have played such a fantastic game and uh, I think um, Leon O'Neill would be very happy with his troops at this stage. You want to try to go for three, try to convince Rocky to foul him but not happening there so ball got deflected. Hobart to get it back. 11 left on the shot clock. There's Mickles. It's an on-ball here from Boucher. Now, Czech Stamick's on as well too, and nearly gets that three to go. And Hicks pulls down the board. So, Hobart with a very young lineup out on the floor there. Good so pressure there from Cam Brown. Was it Cam Brown? Yeah, Jacob Cam Richards? Brown. It was Cam, Cam Brown. Brown. Jacob Richards probably comes in at some stage. Glenn, there's Gatlin. Now, Herbert pulls up. Can't get that to go. Gatlin, oh, that's great, great work. Great read as well too there. And to tip that in. Now Nichols coming down the floor here. Jamie Bitted looking to check back in for the Supercats. And I think that's where Anthony Stewart probably wouldn't be happy again. Just that boxing out. Like, you know, they, they, you've got to stop the teams getting that second second opportunity. Boucher nearly lost a handle. Brown able to retrieve it. Muo, shot clock at four. Muo just decides to throw it up. That got nowhere. That was... Not even a player, I don't even think, Glenn. Herbert working his way through. Nice fake over Brown and gets a nice roll there. BJ Ratcliffe looks like he's going to check in as well too shortly. Yeah, so it's good the players are getting on the second quarter. You know, just to get a few minutes here and there, and if they go well, they'll stay on. If not, um, you know, they'll, they'll just be able to give the, the first five players a bit of a break. As we've got more subs, I think Maddie and oh, we've got coming off. Uh, tra uh, of course, travel called there, uh, Glenn, as well, too. Mio take an extra step, but air yeah, substitution's coming on. BJ Radcliffe coming on. Uh, Liam McKinley came off for Geelong. Well, I'm not sure who took him. Oh, it would have been Jamie Mid dead because he was asking for a sub, so he'd be back on. Um, so Herbert with it. Now, now down low is Hicks. Hicks nearly with a fake. Mio nearly. Didn't fall for it. And Gatlin with the tip. No, can't get it. Muo there swapping it away. Bouch able to retrieve or Cam Brown able to retrieve it as Masunda comes down the floor here. So yeah, Muo. Pump fake. Step back. Just holds onto it. Goes baseline. And foul on the play. So yeah, we've got a, it's offensively. I think the Hobart team they've got some firepower there, but there's a lot of obviously a, a few younger players there in Jack Stanix and Cam Brown. Uh, as Nathan Moo goes to the line for two shots. Uh, looks like Geelong are already in the team building. So Nathan Moo at the line. A very good foul shooter. Yes. I'll probably put the mockers on him. I hope I don't. But Yeah, yeah you just did. I, think I do every time. <laughs> it's like every game we replay, Glenn. Everyone. 
He shoots about 95, got, 95%, but uh, I'll say he's a good shooter. Any uh, I'm, uh, in some ways, I'm glad you're in the coaches bo- <laughs> in the coaching box next year and not, uh, not with, with us in the, com- well. in the commentators. <laughs> <laughs> we, we put a live mic down to you. Oh, <laughs> oh no, good group. Do <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you put the mockers on everyone. Meanwhile, <laughs> uh, foul on the play. So Geelong will, will get it back as Hobart uh, up the ante here a little bit. Uh, we have a full man coverage. So and I think that's where Anthony Stewart, he's given Craig Moller and Trey Nichols a bit of a break, but he's put some really good defensive players on the court in their absence to try and slow the Geelong team down. As Craig. Moller's coming back in. Yep, and Herbert goes for three, and, well, you get, you get some friendly rolls with these rims at the deck, and uh, no question there on that one. No, Geelong, Geelong have just passed, made that extra pass, and... They're doing really well. Their defence is great. Uh, the coach, Leon O'Neill, has really scouted Hobart players. Made them a thing. Moves, shot harder. He's got to shoot under pressure each shot that he's taking. So if he's open, he'll he'll hit it. And Muo on cue. Can't get that to go. And Geelong get the rebound through Medneb. And now Herbert, great pass into Higgs. Higgs couldn't reel it in. Craig Muller coming in, as you say. And he'll come in for, looks like... Teary, you know, slightly frustrated. He's been a bit frustrated the whole game, I think. Yeah. He's had a couple of calls that he thought were his, and then he threw, he tried to get go for a couple of fouls, and he threw a couple a couple of shots up that, that are a bit out of character for, for me because he's such a consistent shooter. Uh, he's just got to play the whistle and focus, and, but the defence has been fantastic, so that's why he's a bit rattled, I think. Oh, great vision by Jack Stamwix. Cam Brown once again on the backdoor play. Yeah, Jack Stamwix is a fantastic player. He's only young, but he's a fantastic player. He can score, but he's one of the best passes that, that Hobart has at the moment. Christian Rocky went all the way and he got fouled and then he ended up in the first row there of the stands. Near the Telstra section as well too up there. So uh, Christian Rocky will be at the line. And I think Geelong are just responding too easy at this stage. Like I know that at halftime I'm sure that um, that Hobart are going to have a good talk with uh, Anthony Stewart, Nathan Barrett, and we're going to talk to their troops and they really focus on the defensive transition, slow this Geelong team down who have just uh, they've really put on a great show tonight. So the crowd making a bit of noise. As Rocky puts up his second free throw, it is short and he gets his own board though. Herbert, looking at his options here, now gets the on ball. Now Rocky and Stamwick's well read and now bringing the ball down here for the charges. Jack Stamwick's has had a good input thus far, he hasn't had any shots but he's uh, done really well on court. So on cue he gets it, nice, nice pass, pass. and Muir should have finished that one. Muir with a second opportunity gets it to go, but should have really made the first time, Glenn, he reward Jack Stanwix for that lovely pass inside. And that's one of those missed assists, like, you know, I'd love to see the stats for missed assists, as mm. I've mentioned in the past, and um, I think, yeah, at half time I'd like to talk a bit more about that, especially with Ben Simmons, but um, <laughs> Jack Stanwix, fantastic, fantastic passer, and that was really good, at least with thing finished it off at the end as Stamix turns it over. Molly yep. gets a foul. Yep. And of course the Demarcus Gatlin hit a three down the upper end too while you were uh, just chatting along there Glenn. So very good first half so far. And two shots to Geelong. Yes so it looks like it's going to be McKinley. Yes Liam McKinley. At the line, Trey Nichols looks like he wants back in. As McKinley knocks down the first. It'd be good to see the percentage as of the first half because the Geelong have really shot the ball well. And Hobart had as well. I can know. Um, currently, from the field, about 40% at the moment, Glenn. And with a lot of pressure, Hobart have had a lot of pressure on that. Like Geelong have really applied a lot of pressure defensively to make Hobart Hobart shoot at forty percent. But you know, I think it's been a bit, it's been pretty free flowing as well, hasn't it? Like you know, yes. a quick, quick basket. So it's, again, it's been entertaining for the crowd. 
However, the standard of the defence has been really good as well. So, Mollett now, Stanwick, Stanwick, ah, just slips and foul caught on McHenry. He's losing his footing there a little bit, young Jack. Yeah, not once, but twice, so um, I think he'll go, Jack Stanwick will go to the line. And we've got a timeout. Timeout, and uh, Geelong have been, as you say, Glenn, they've been shooting quite well, and they're up by 13 at the moment 51-38. Yeah, and it's all stemmed from the defence here then. And I think one thing I was going to say too, like with Ben Simmons in the NBA, and like Jack Stamix is a perfect example, when he made such a great pass to Nathang Moo and Nathang missed it, and then he got a rebound and put it back in, but that doesn't go down for an assist for, for Jack Stamix. But I say with Ben Simmons, he averages his 10 assists or whatever it is a game. Um, but it would be great to see... A stat where it's missed assists, so when he's passed off to people and they've missed an easy shot that they probably should make or a pass under the basket, just how many missed assist players have, um, you know, especially point guards. Like you know, they get the ball to people, uh, they get rewarded when they get the shot in, but you know they they really get some good passes off, and sometimes it'd be good to see that extra stat just to see how valuable the players really are, especially with someone like Ben Simmons who has the ball like 70 odd percent yeah. of the team, so he might get his 20 points and 10 rebounds and 9 assists a game, or, you know 17 points, 8 and 8 but yeah, I'd just be interested to see how many of those, those other passes that he, that he dishes out where people don't make the shots and it could be a stat that happens one day in in the NBL or NBA, but um, you know, it's, it's just sad that it doesn't get rewarded when um, you know, people dish out such good passes. Absolutely, the analytics of the game there, brought to you by Glenn Fairfield, it is, it is very insightful, by the way, uh, as Jack Stanley knocks down the free throw. And he's really stepped up his game, young Jack Stamick. So look forward to a big 20, 21 for, for young Jack Stamick. Absolutely. Yeah. With, yes. with, with the Tasmanian, with Tasmania getting the NBL team, it's really, it's, it's fantastic for the young players now to, to just have that that chance to, to be, you know, if they play well, to be seen and hopefully get a, get a position in the squad. So I don't think the players realise how lucky they are to be coming through basketball at the moment with the opportunities that, that are arise and also as the NBL grows the Melbourne teams like, you know, it's, so, it's such a good league the NBL so um, you know, it's going to be exciting to see if any Tasmanian guys get in the league in the near future and Craig Moller knocks it down and Craig Moller could be on his way to Tasmania soon if, um, if we're not careful too with a new franchise coming in hopefully uh, once we get an official announcement on that deal being set in concrete. Meanwhile, back at the ball game here, Demarcus Gatlin trying to, he nearly got triple team there, gets over Radcliffe, can't get that to go. And now Moller with the rebound. And the halftime buzz has gone off Glenn, so the Supercats have a 10 point lead at the half, 51 to 41. And they've deserved that 10 point lead. You know, they've really played well at both ends of the court. So it's going to be an interesting. As we go back to the second half, it's going to be interesting mm. to see how Hobart respond to the great half that Geelong had. Absolutely. Masunda working his way through. Kicks it out to White. Nice play. Great start. And a lot of pressure. Like, you know, mm. the intensity is already... You can see the intensity is a lot better now. Already early on in the second quarter. Uh, the second half, sorry. Absolutely. So Nichols and Gatlin. It's a good matchup right there. And Herb try to throw that one away and then can't get that to go. So Muo picked it up. Now Masunda down. I think our camera's a bit too zoomed in as Masunda nearly goes. But Muo there for the tip. Great finish there from, from, from Mu. And uh, yeah, that all stemmed from, uh, from a steal from Terry Masunda. So look how Geelong need to respond now. There's a lot more pressure on. I think Hobart are talking a lot more as well. The crowd's behind them. And oh, nice, nice work there by Hicks down low. He's hard to stop, Marlow Hicks. He's, uh, he's had a really good game thus far. So Nichols now Moller, Moller works his way inside over Hicks. Can't get that to go, and Hicks now bringing it down through to Gatlin. Gatlin works his 
Play here at the 45. Ball goes down to Davis. Davis, one-on-one -on -one with White. Rejected by White. Good job there by Sack White. And now Mio coming down the floor here. Mio to Moller. Moller backs down Gatlin. And Moller works his way through. Kicks it out. Nichols for three is good. Big shot there. Big shot, and that's a momentum shot that any team, you know, you need to make those shots. And Trey Nichols has done it time and time again. So, Gatlin here with it. Apologies if we're too zoomed in, folks. It was, um, I know what I was up to on that night as the foul's been called on Nichols. Good violation. Uh, no, no foul first, Glenn. Uh, Trey reaching in. And as I said, it's really good for, for Hobart um, fans to see someone... You know, the calibre of Nathan Herbert, who's had a great first half here. But, like, you know, just, you can just see the experience that these guys have in NBL. Mm. You can actually tell that they've played NBL um, compared to some of the other players that haven't had that experience. As offensive foul's been called on Davis. A bit out of control by the looks mm. of it then. Yes. But again, he's been aggressive all night long. He yeah, hasn't really been afraid good. to take it to the rim, Glenn. And... Yeah, sometimes he'll get rewarded. Sometimes we'll just go the other way for him. Yeah, no, he said it. He, and, and you're right, like you mm. know, and it's great. And I'm sure Coach you know, Leon O'Neill would be very happy with that, with that effort that he makes. So Moller, yeah, Masunda, over Mended, yeah, just long, good rebound by Moller. Ne Nichols pump fake. Now Muir here at the corner for a three, just short, and tight contest there. Who was the last off? And it was last touched by, it looked like it was Pesunda by the sounds of it, so Geelong will get it back. So, is that McKinry? Yep, yeah, McKinry. Yep. He's going to inbound it in here for us. And he'll go to Herbert. Now Gatlin will bring it down here for the Supercats. So Gatlin working his way through and foul Moller. And that was a nice screen up the top there. I'm not sure who the screen is from, but it, it just allowed uh, Kieran Masunda to, to not have to be right next to his player and for Gatlin to, to be able to have that extra step. So Kieran Masunda's a, you know, one of, been one of the best defenders in the league for a number of years. So, But when you get a big screen set, yeah, yeah, your teammates have got to help help just for that second just to so recover. And in that case, it uh, didn't happen. So Gatlin got the line for two and he makes his first. Yeah. Knocks down the first. And should knock down the second here, Glenn. Oh, I'm just not going to say anything. No. <laughs> Please don't. Oh. Well, there you go. I sort of did, unfortunately. But. <laughs> As Muay comes down the floor. Number Sunda. Here's Nichols. Nichols working his way through. Beautiful pass to Sack White. And White couldn't get that one to go. So another missed assist there, as you say, Glenn. And ball here with the Supercats as Gatlin for three. Just long. Hicks with the overboard. And then spin move. And then back to Gatlin. But too many blue jerseys there. Yeah, it's good pressure there from Hobart. A bit out of control from Geelong. Nice oh, pass. nice. As foul will be called on Hicks. Hicks, well... <laughs> When you just <laughs> kind of just standing there and kind of moving around a little bit, I think that would be a fair every day of the week. Yeah, I think uh, that was a pretty clear foul. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So Craig Moller at the line for two. And as, as we say, he probably is on that um, that wish list for this Tasmanian franchise. Oh, if it does get up, Glenn, we know that Craig loves it here in Hobart and um, would certainly... Look at that opportunity if it arises. Yeah, and he's, you know, he does a great job in the NBL when he's injury-free. He's had a few yes. injuries of late, mm. but, and he's fantastic in the community as well, which is a big thing. And I know that Anthony Stewart really, he does a lot in the community himself. That, that like, you know, it's not just about on court. It's about the whole package to, to represent Hobart. Moller's certainly done that with flying colours, and yeah, it would be great to have him down here for representing Hobart. That's Marlowe Hicks. Puts on the moves and gets one back on Craig Moller. So I think Marlo Hicks will go to the line for two. Now, we had a chance last year to interview this uh, interview Marlo um, post-game with the um, other Hobart venture. Um, and 
Um, but Marlo, uh, a, a great guy off the off the court, um, and uh, he was very nice to us when he spoke to us post game, and um, certainly been around for the last few seasons. And that big frame and big unit, he's um, certainly a, a, a good asset for the SuperCats. Oh, he's, he, yeah, he just plays his role so well and makes the defense. His defensive presence is just mm. such a such a big thing. As we've got Jacob Richards coming into the, into the game, game. yeah, another young. Young man who is lucky enough part post this season to represent Australia in the three on three yes. um, tournament overseas. So you know, he's, he's, you know, Jacob Richards is also one that might be on the radar for a Tasmanian NBL team in a few years, in three or four years, or four years time after he finishes his college degree in America. So Gatlin puts it to the floor. Here's Nichols missed a shot down the other end. Nichols able to pick up the pieces there. Off and running. Nichols to Richards. And foul is called. Great work by Jacob Richards. Running the lane there to get that pass from Nichols. And great, yeah, great vision there from Trey Nichols. And that, there's another one. Like, you know, we talk about the missed assist, although he was fouled. So I'm not sure. Uh, but, but it just shows, really, like, you know, the point guards... They're getting the ball to everybody. If the shots don't go in, they miss out on that on that assist. And I know I know that individually they don't really worry about the, the stats. But you know, from from our perspective, I guess we just see point guards or, or any any player really should be rewarded. You know, at least acknowledged for for the passing they do, whether that shot goes in or not. As Jacob Richards gets his one out of two three throws, so it's a promising start from Jacob. Yes, certainly is, Glenn. And um, again, Hobart with that um, extended pre pressure here. And I thought he was unlucky in the NBL 1 in 2019 not to uh, be close for the, uh, was it like rookie of the year or the best, the best junior in that competition. I thought he had a fantastic season last year in the NBL 1. And good extensive pressure there by the Chargers as they get Geelong to turn over. So Hobart getting another opportunity here as Masunda gets us restarted. Richards now Nichols for three. Looks good. Ah, can't get it to go. White with the rebound. Yeah, here's Mio. Mio slowing this one down. Mio decides to go it himself and can't get it to go. Masunda, great offensive rebound and gets the two. Very good play there from Jerry Masunda. Just read the, read the ball really well and got his uh, offensive play, his defensive Geelong player just off, I think it was Medved, Med, Medved that um, yeah, sort of slipped over and the Sunday was able to put a nice easy two points in. So. so Hicks here at the top of the key, now Herbert off the handoff. So Herbert splits nice. for a couple, good pass to Medved with a runner and shot clock violation. From referee Andrew Johnson saying the Supercats didn't get off in time. Well, that was a good defensive play from Hobart. That's the, probably the first first 24 second shot violation that's that's happened in this game. Uh, obviously the shooting's been the ball. It doesn't take long with some of these players for normally to get the ball up. So Nichols now Muo Muo puts it to the floor. Fake beautiful pass. Sack White with a reverse layup. Pass. And Zach White, is, you know, he, he reads the play really well. So as soon as someone penetrates, he will he will just make make his move and try and get himself open and present himself. So he kicks, nice pass. Meddev is open all day and gets it to go. Great mm. three pointer by Jamie Meddev. And again, you know, Geelong have had fantastic teamwork the whole game. And just that that pass there, like. Uh, Meddev was open. That was never going to miss. So well done to Geelong yeah. on that play there. So Geelong now putting some extensive pressure on here as well too. So Richards to get us restarted. Now Nichols coming tight, tight roping that sideline there. Tries to again good defensive pressure by Herbert, but. Nichols finds a way, tries to go to pass to Muo. Bodies flying everywhere. You think it could have been 50 metres in, or, or a three week, three week report in the AFL. It could have well been. Jamie Medved, back to back threes, gets it to go. He got fouled by Muo, and Jamie Medved will go to the line for a potential four point play. And that's really lifted their spirits then. That was a fantastic shot, and obviously Nathan Muo fouled him, so he wasn't very happy with that. 
with his effort on the like you know he tried to put pressure on but like you know you've just got to be careful you don't want to foul a three point shot it's really important you That's put pressure right. on but you know it, it's something that you know it's not and he's coming off for a brew yeah, now. I reckon uh, Anthony Stewart would probably just have a bit of a word to him and say, mate, put the pressure on, but get your hands out of there. And Meddev, you know, he's sort of in his own at the moment. Like, he know. is. He's back-to-back -back triples, as we say. And he's a heart and soul of this team, a veteran of the of the league, and has been very loyal to the Supercats and has, has played all his um, seasons with them. Yeah, he and Nathan Herbert work really well together in the, in the backcourt, along with Gatlin. So White and Masunda. Masunda put some moves on. Beautiful work by Terry. And still one of the quickest players in the in the Siebel NBL one comp, Terry Masunda. Yeah, he, he can just put those, those that speed on so quick. So you think you've covered him and then you go left or right. And uh, they great finish then. Mendev tries to go for another basket, can't get a go. Last touch by Hicks. I'm yeah, I'm assuming, so I hope I have to get it back. I'm not sure what the score is at the moment. But no, we um, unfortunately we don't get a good look at the uh, monitor screens. The way we're positioned, Glenn, it's um, it's not um, not a great situation. But um, and of course, I don't have any um, live stats on me at the moment either. So we're doing the best we can. So I reckon Hobart have, have kind of worked their way back into it. But Geelong are just holding that that. Kind of that buffer at the moment, I, I, I'd say. Yeah, and Meddev is obviously you know, those big two, three pointers, and a, and a four point play really. So with uh, seven points straight out. So Hobart are trying, but Geelong just seem to have all the answers at the moment. There's Craig Moller puts up the three, can't get that to go. Hicks working his way through now, through traffic, the big fella. Now Meddev open again, can't get that one to go this time. And Herb with the rebound, but hands everywhere, and Hobart get it back as Masunda uses his speed, kicks it out, Nichols open, and well, that nearly went through. <laughs> it's referee AJ Johnson. <laughs> he just takes a deep breath before he makes that call. Foul was called on Nathan Herbert. And three shots for Trey Nichols. So yes. Yeah, you know, again, that, you know, the Geelong coach would, probably wouldn't be happy with the, with the no. fact that his players have done so well. Pressure it really made every every basket hard for for Trey Nichols and Mathang Moo who have been shooting outside today. But you know that that's a foul that you just don't want to give up. Someone of Trey Nichols shooting ability, like you know, he's normally really consistent at the free throw line. You don't want to give him three shots. Well, that's right, um, and of course. You know, as you say, Glenn, you know, Stewie not happy with fouling a three point shooter down one end. Leon O'Neill would be exactly the same exactly right now. Exactly the same, yeah. Mm. And it's like, you know, you're going you're gonna to do these things as players. Like, you know, no one's perfect, but there's just a couple of things in a game you want to really try not to do. And that's foul a three point shooter. Now, but it looks like a little. Now. Is it a blocking foul or a charge? Oh, it's offensive foul, yeah. So that's on Chris Billicarps. I did see someone make contact with a charges player, but I didn't realise how much contact there was. But, like, you know, the referee, was, you know, he had his eyes right on it and nobody's complaining, so obviously there was, the contact was there. And, of course, it's going to clean up the wet spot here, so they've got the floor wipers on. In a Lakers top? Yes. Hopefully next season he'll have a Chargers top on or, a, yes. or an, NBL, an NBL one top we'll on or make, a sponsors top. We'll, we'll make sure we'll, we'll make we'll get on to um, uh, a sponsorship and media director on that or my boss really, Glenn. We'll get on to the get on to them about that. I think for your boss, wouldn't it be great to have have a major sponsor, a T-shirt of the uh, Tail Boys and Tail Girls with a with a major sponsor, a Hobart major sponsor. Absolutely, yeah, that that, that's idea. that's that's certainly a good idea to, to bring forward to um to to our boss uh, in the next meeting we have with him. Uh, no, for pre sure. no pressure. No, at all. no. But, uh, well, we've got a, we've got heaps of time, Glenn. We no, no, season no. doesn't start till <laughs> for another, another year. half a dozen months. <laughs> Meanwhile, Masunda tried to get that up, lost the handle, and well, they say he was last time. Marley X gives him a high five along the way there, but um. Tyrion Masunda's case forward on deaf ears. So Geelong the restart here as um, and he 
is Blickhub's bringing the ball down here for the Supercats. So good not pressure. Not Fly long. Sonder. Not long here left in this quarter as Gatling puts up the three. That's another air ball, and then well, Blickhub's trying to outdo his brother who plays with Geelong in the AFL. Um, took mark of the year. That wasn't bad then. <laughs> that was it was all right. Well, I think the foul is called on Sunder. Yeah. Just, uh, boxed him out. Whilst he was in the air, so it could have been a dangerous one. I know that's Drew right. Saunders not a, at all a dirty player, and never has been. He's such a, a, a just one of those awkward moments. Yeah. One of those awkward moments where you just get caught up, and um, one comes flying over the other, and then and it was know. a great call from the referee to to realise that because Blickards, you know, he just sort of flew in the air then, and uh, you know, so that contact sometimes it might be minimal, but you know, it's good that the referee picked it up. That's right. Siren in the background here. Substitution being made. It looks like Christian Rocky, I think, might be coming back into the game. Hobart, I believe, have made substitution as well too. Yeah, Marlo Hicks coming off for a rest. So Hobart restart here. And Geelong have got a big game, obviously, against the North West Thunder the next night. So Yes, they certainly do, Glenn. But you've got to go for a win every game. So they're really putting everything into this game. And if they, I think if you know, teams that come to Tasmania, if they can come come home with a one win and one loss record, they're pretty happy on the Tasmanian um, road trip. Absolutely. Uh, Mollet got fouled there quite heavily on the play. So go to the line for two. And Mollet's played a pretty good game. He's had a lot of pressure put on him. And his, his rebound, he gets a lot of rebounds at both ends of the court. But, uh, you know, he... In this league, he really can light it up and get absolutely big can. And he quickly can. and quickly as well. Like you know, oh yes, ten points to twenty in in a minute or two. So um, you know, he's a fantastic acquisition for the league. Yes. Can't make a second. He nearly got his own rebound out of all that. Now Blickhalfs with the ball as they come down the floor here. Third, uh, third quarter here from doing it, Tame Center. Yeah. As whistle goes in the background. Sure. Is that foul on BJ? Is it on BJ? Yeah. yeah. BJ. Yep, BJ looking quite puzzled. He was puzzled, but however, I think there was enough contact there for a guy that comes off the bench to be called for that one. Like, you know, mm. a big fella uh, in Liam McKin McKinley really, um, you know, he, he knew he was fouled, so uh, he got the line for two. So that's the first. And BJ Radcliffe, like, you know, it's unlucky. You've got, you know, referees call things what they see. So that's like, right. he might be too disturbed, too worried about it, but he'll still try and plead his case on any call as BJ did. Absolutely. McKinry misses the second and rebound by Moller. All wide. You could take your pick on that one, folks. As uh, Nichols now comes down the floor here. So Nichols working one-on-one -on -one with Blixar. Now Muo for three. Yes. And that's where Nathaniel was so reliant for the Hobart Chargers. You know, such a massive part of their, of their championship run. But he just hits those big shots. Certainly does. A big time player, Nathaniel Muo, as Gatlin. It's the on ball. Yeah, if you want to get... If, if the game's on the line, he's definitely the player that, that Hobart would want to get the ball to because he's so consistent. And McHenry there with the tip in after Gatlin missed the runner. So Nichols goes cross court. Muo for back to back triples. Not there. Ratcliffe and then, well, Blickarps went to the floor. Stewie with his hands in the air. I don't know who's this going to be assessed on. He, I think it's going to be on Ratcliffe just by looking at all the body language. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, Stewie not happy with the call, but unfortunately, it's that first person that goes down to the ground that, that does get pinned for it. And, you know, yeah, it's, a, it's a, uh, that, as we said earlier, it's a tough one to call in those situations, but you have to pin the first one that goes down because the second one comes off second best, really. And here's Ronald Reeks with his referee's hat on there, which is yeah. great to see because uh, Ronnie's ref at Seville level. Yes, former Seville referee. Yeah, so it's really good to, to see that perspective because 
you know, as, as a player or a coach, you don't you don't understand sometimes why certain things are called the way they are, just on little calls. That's right. It, it, it's, it's one of those tough ones where, unfortunately, it's like we know that they're both going for the ball, but if one... It, it, it's un, unfortunate and accidental kind of contact, but, you know, within the rules of the game, you have to go, well, unfortunately, you've kind of put yourself in a position where, yep, and then the second player comes in trying to get it without knowing, you've got to make a call. Yeah. You can't let that go. No, and that, that was fine. I'm sure there's no crimes with it now, but I, I think the good thing is that, that it's been consistent. Like, That's right. The referee's so consistent yeah. that, that Anthony's sure to be over that straight away. Oh, he would be. And, like, you know, now they've got the ball at the offensive end, although they've just... Uh, went out of bounds. Trey Nichols just run out of room there in the end. Um, but in this game, they've been consistent on that call. Yeah. So there's no issue from both coaches in regards to that. As Craig Moller comes off for a rest. Cam Brown back into the game. He had a good first half when he came in. Really goes some good energy to the Hobart team. I think Gatlin's probably been a little bit quiet since the first half. He mm. really did a fantastic job in the first half. So hopefully he can get back into it again and uh, keep showing the fans. Oh, McHenry with a spin move and got knocked away. I think Geelong wanted a goal, a goal tent. I'm not sure. Med there, yeah, fake. And corner three, just long. Good rebound by Gatlin. Spin move, rejected by White. Brown there to pick up the scraps and Mio comes down the floor here now for the charges. So and this is a big play ooh, now. Ooh, good, a big good screen. screen. Cam Brown. So this is a real momentum play, this one here. Although oh. I might have lost the ball. No, Radcliffe were able to retrieve. And three-quarter time buzzer. So Hobart have got it back within seven. And Geelong lead it 71 to 64. Yeah, they certainly bridged the gap. And I think Hobart's defence was a lot better in that quarter. I, I find that Hobart are struggling to probably slow down with Marlo Hicks. I think he's had yep. a really good game tonight. Just, I'm not sure what stats he's got, but just his... It's big screens and his presence on the on the court. He really helps his, his teammates out. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Hobart can bridge this gap. Geelong have played a really good game, and you know, Hobart Hobart have played well as just, just as good as well. But um, the momentum certainly been in Geelong's favour. But they can turn around pretty quick with the Hobart Chargers team. You know, only needs uh, uh, Trey Nichols to get a couple of baskets, or Craig Milo or Mathen Moo and. Hobart can get back into any game. Gatlin made a two. A couple of players ago. Nichols for three. Just not there. Mio with the rebound. And then got rejected there. Now Gatlin once again off and running here for the Supercats. Meddead for three. Yes. Jamie Meddead with the three. I like that one. That was a big follow through there. And, and great teamwork again. Like, you know, that's what we talked about. Although half the Geelong players have just run on the court. <laughs> they, they thought there was a timeout, oh. I think, maybe. I'm not sure what the go was there. I'll try, um, oh, uh, towel boy. Must be someone. Must, uh, have must be a off. wet floor. Game commissioner Josh Byrne coming on to assist as well, too. So we're not sure what's happened to the young... Like with the Lakers top. So, great job there by Game Commissioner Josh Byrne, who's, who I know is uh, enjoying his his year off. Oh, he would be. Like um, but he is looking forward to coming back for 2021, mate. Yeah, no, he's uh, done it. He, yeah, the, the volunteers that, that, um, that are around basketball doing an amazing job. And, mm. and Josh Byrne, like, what is it, 14 years, I think it was? Something, something he's been with the Chargers for, forever. Since he was yeah. since he was 17 or 18, I think he, he's taken on that role. And, like, you know, yeah. he's just such a good communicator. I know you've Absolutely. done that role a couple yeah. of times yes. as well. And, mm. uh, like, you know, it's just it's just really good to have someone that loves basketball so much. You can even step up, be the game, game coordinator or the game day coordinator, uh, that's what it's called. Commissioner. Game commissioner. And then still... Wipe the floor, like the, you know, a bit of water off the floor as well. So, multitask. Absolutely, I can uh, uh, vouch for him because I did the same thing last year for another organisation who we won't mention on air. So he is he's, um, Gatlin with the ball. His play is back on after clearing up the wet spot. So Gatlin putting on some moves and then puts it up. Can't get it to go. Good pressure though by the Chargers as. 
But it's only going to take yep. a bit of momentum either way, and this game is oh, going to be a... Oh, yeah. Every time I that, was, that was good passing there too, good though, pass. Glenn. Fantastic Good pass. touch, and then Muir just couldn't reel that one in. Yeah. And Zach White, is, you know, he does have a fantastic all-round game, and you know, unfortunately for, in that instance, Nathang Moon could not hold the ball, but uh, like it was a good... The idea was good, so I don't yeah. think Anthony Stewart, coach of Hobart, would be unhappy with, uh, with the play. It's just the fact that Moon... Yeah, they probably just pull it off as well as what they needed to. Yeah. Hobart are also uh, putting a lot more pressure on the ball, but the outside shots for Geelong, they, they really are uh, just hitting some big shots when they need to. They are off to a very good start here in this fourth quarter and really extended that lead. Hobart need to get a bit of a wriggle on here, and Craig Muller may get that going for him. And he's definitely a player that can do that and has done it from time to time again. So I think it was Craig Nichols that passed that, yep. that over to Craig Moller. So. And the shot <coughs> there by that was, um, Rocky. Couldn't get that to go. Now McKinry for the two. That is short. He and didn't look too confident shooting No, that shot very casual in that, in Maybe that he shot. Maybe wasn't set properly. Muo and oh, big it's shot, a big foot was on the line. This is a one of the big pet hates by um, one of your good friends in Shane Hill, um, where they get that ball and then all of a sudden they <laughs> they don't know where they are and then they take that back foot back sometimes and then reaches that uh, out of bounds line. And that's the second time Moo's thing Moo's done that in this game and that was a three point shot. So mm. like that could have yeah, that, that's a that's a big turnover. Uh, unfortunate, but that's a big turnover when the thing nailed that shot and then it was cancelled. Mm. So the shot goes up here, but that missed everything there from uh, Rocky. Gets his uh, gets another opportunity, and he got fouled, and we'll go to line. Yeah, fouls on sack one. And there's a smart play there. Um, like, you know, Craig Moller just wasn't quite in position, so as Rocky Rocky realised, sorry, I was just trying to work out. You know, Rocky Christian Rocky, yeah. yeah. Christian realised that Craig Morrow's feet weren't set, so he sort of got him in the air. And now he's at the line for two shots. He's hit his first. Lean off the line for a second. Second. And the crowd making a bit of noise here. The crowd's been fantastic tonight. And I think they've yeah. appreciated both teams. Not just the Hobart team, but like when Geelong have done some really good things and shot the lights out. You now the Hobart crowd are also clapping. So it's really good to see. Um, normally you'd expect some booze and stuff, but you know the respect that it's good to see people respecting all players on both teams. Absolutely, and I, I should mention this was played on a Sunday afternoon, Glenn, and uh, you know not a bad turnout for a Sunday it's afternoon. A good, great crowd for a game. Sunday afternoon because uh, you know they would have had probably local basketball playing yes. then, social, mm. local, so, you know, it really is, and we've got other sports to compete with, so, That's right. uh, you know, it is a good crowd. Shot goes up, that can't go, foul on the play here. And the foul's on Chris Blickarms. So that's his third personal. So this was the second game. This is on a Sunday. So yes. So the night game. before, they played Geelong. They, so uh, the Northwest Thunder had won by 18. 96 78 was the scoreline. I can tell you, Northwest Thunder got up on that day as Mola kicks out. Musunda nearly loses the handle. Does a good balancing act there to keep it alive. Mio trying to go baseline. Tough defense. White here, mid range. Beautiful. Good shot. And I know, obviously, in that. In commentary earlier when I always oh, nice steal. Nichols be a dunk. to Masunda. No. Great work there. Now, can this spark a bit of a run? Now, this is just what Hobart needs. Like, it doesn't take much for Hobart to, to get on that run. Such a and, good, and again, good that extensive there. pressure there, Glenn. They're really getting up and in. Good read there by, I think that was uh, White, I think, yeah, that read that one. Yes. Yep. And the crowd are right into it as well. So, yeah, earlier in the fork, in the in the, um, I was saying that you know this is the first game of the weekend, so I wasn't aware it was a Sunday. So I apologise about that one. Herbert misses the three. Now can Hobart get another basket here and just make things a little bit interesting? So Moller wide here at the corner. And down low, Mio once again over Gatlin can't get it to go. But Moller no, with Moller. a spectacular tip in, great work. 
That was a fantastic rebound there. Lucky to get it in, but uh, you know, you take the points. It doesn't matter how ugly it looks. That's two points is two points. So That's right. Another offensive rebound for Craig Moller. And foul there on Masunda. And Davis to come back in here for the Supercats. So, Billy Carves will have a rest. Fourth personal there for Thierry Masunda. So we're in a little bit of foul trouble here in this game. And it's not very often that you'll see Terry Masunda be in foul trouble, although he does play aggressive defence, but he plays very smart defence. Mm. So he's got to be careful here not to pick up a fifth, especially as Hobart are trying to make a run to come back into this game. So Herbert and <laughs> Herbert we were a good veteran fake and Mio just fall for that hook line sinker. And I think if there was a, probably another Tenth of a second or so, Herbert would have had the ball up in the air. He but, would have too. But he yeah. got crushed. Mm. So, uh, but still, again, it's, it's building up another foul in this quarter. So Hobart will be in foul trouble soon. And, um, you know, to Geelong's perspective, they'll be at the line to Oh, there's a foul. And I reckon, yes, yep, yeah, they'll go. And that's another. That just shows the consistency of the refs yep. in this game. It's the exact same call as what BJ Ratcliffe got called for down the other end. And, like, you know, it's... So, yeah, the referees, and regardless of what position they're in, they're, they're, they're refing it the same way, so that's great. To so, timeout called, 527 remaining. Seven points is our margin here, Glenn, 80 to 73. So, this will be the, probably, you know, this is a time now where Hobart really need to make a run. I know we've talked about it, they've had some momentum here and there, but Geelong keep, keep coming back and hitting big shots to stop Hobart's momentum. However, you know, this is this is fourth quarter now and uh, like, you know, Anthony Stewart will want some really good stops and he'd be working so look, you know, we want we've got to get a couple of stops here, bridge the gap, run our offense, and get the ball into Craig Moller, you know, if he can penetrate and you know, have Nathaniel out in the wing or Craig Nichols for a penetration drive. Um, you know, it's gonna be an exciting last few or five minutes. Absolutely will be, and you can see Rex Serrano out there pumping up the crowd and okay, getting a little bit of a chant going as well too. So and the crowd is a good crowd for a yeah. Sunday afternoon. Now, now, mm. now I'm aware of that one. It's actually not a bad crowd. The hardest thing for people to see is this is a five, four to five thousand seat stadium. Yeah, that's right. So, like, and it's amazing that Hobart were able to basically fill this stadium. Come. You know, uh, come, the finals. come the yeah, come preliminary final night against the same team, Glenn. Um, which, yes, was a massive night in Tasmanian basketball, let alone Hobart basketball. Yeah, and, and we've talked about Hobart having you know the biggest crowds in the in the league, along with Geelong and uh, Mildura, Mount Gambier, sorry. Yep. Uh, so yeah, the country towns, but you know it's just fantastic. This league is so strong that we can get such good crowds in it to support it. Milo pulls up from the elbow. Don't get the go. Muo couldn't reel that one in. And all of a sudden, Rocky has it. And, oh, he lost it. But good work by Davis to reel that back in. Gatlin got double teamed. Back to Davis. Davis works his way through. Gets over Mollock. Short on that one. Now Nichols comes down the floor here for the charges. Got Masunda in support. He doesn't need it. But missed that one. And Davis with the rebound. And nearly, again, good pressure by Moller there as Davis has to put it to the floor and bring it over here for the Supercats. And an eight-second violation has been called. So that was great pressure, and the crowd now really you know, you know, appreciated that defensive that defensive effort there from Craig Moller. And, like, you know, again, Hobart are trying, doing everything they can to, to try and get back into this game. And it is only seven points. So. Yep, and with 4.45 remaining there, Glenn, we get a good look there at the monitor on this wider shot. From a cameraman for So let's see what the Chargers can do to reel this one back in. So Nichols. That's a nice play. Moller. And pulls up for the two and gets it to go. Margin back to five. Yeah, Craig Moller had an average of 23, maybe 23 points a game in 2018, along with Trey Nichols. So, like, you know, they at Mathang Blue obviously had a average a fair bit as well so coming down a stretch in games like this there's a lot of players that would stand up for Hobart as Hicks, Hicks gets another two points. I've been very impressed with Hicks the way he's played and you know as I said he's not 
dominated the game, but he's just done so many little things to help Geelong. Nichols with a tough J, gets that's it to it. go. That's a, that's a big shot for him to train. There's a lot of pressure on him then, so you know, he's a class player. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Hobart are hoping that he can keep it, get his eye in for this last four minutes. So Rocky. And then you heard the, I think that was JB there in the background and said good day. As Trey Nichols gets to turn to go. Marginal back to five once again. 82-77 is our scoreline. And the pressure's really, you know, really increased here for Hobart. So Trey Nichols, as we said, like, you know, it only takes a basket or two from Trey Nichols and you know, that he can just change games. So, oh, Hicks fought about it, gave it to Herbert instead, and it was a good option. Nathan Herbert with a three. And as we've said you know, a number of times throughout this game, he's a, a class actor, Nathan Herbert, and that's very lucky to be able to watch him and, and play at you know, Seabull level after he had you know, played in BL. The Sunda couldn't move, and foul on the play. So, Tira, we're still not good. There he is. Apologies, folks. It's been a long, it's been a long day. <laughs> We're recording this at night, by the way. So, if people, do, if people do work it out eventually, yeah, we usually record these games at night time. So, yes, can, but long days can make you yawn. And we just had one of the Geelong players there um, get his fifth foul. So we had. Oh, he's uh, out. Had the charger man, what's his name? The Rex the Rhino. Rex the Rhino there with a goodbye sign. Nathan Herbert has been fouled out of the game, Glenn. And Nathan Herbert being fouled out of the game is a massive loss for Geelong. I thought he had a he had a brilliant game, but just the way he controlled it, he hit big shots. He was able to include his teammates in um, a lot of plays as well. So I think um, yeah, him and Medved have had a had a great um, did a great job in it. What would you say? They, they both started as guards. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see whether Geelong now, without Herbert, are able to maintain this lead. It really is a Absolutely. big Absolutely. Yeah. And is that the pressure release for Hobart? I wonder. We'll soon find out as the ball's down low with Gatlin. And can't get that one to go. Moore and Davis working on that rebound. Davis got the better of him. A lot of pressure. And then Gatlin gets it to go and foul now. No basket on the play. Foul's called on sack white. So it's a hands foul in the rebounding contest, I yeah, assume. We've got two shots for Davis. Foul trouble. But Davis yep. is really aggressive, like, you know, then like Zach White couldn't do much more except the referee, you know, did see his hand in there, so and it ended up being a good foul for yep. Hobart Miss first. But hopefully Davis will be able to hit the second, the second one. one for the Geelong. And yes, on cue he does. So back out the six is our margin here. As Nichols comes down the floor. This has been a good game from the word get-go, Glenn. And trust you are enjoying the coverage here, wherever you might be watching. Good pass to White. Now Nichols, Masunda puts it to the floor. White, corner three. Not there. Muay gets the O-board. Muay puts it up. Yeah. Hands in the play. Nichols, this is like a bit of a broken play now as Moller goes for it. Can't get it to go. And now ball goes out of court and Geelong to get it back. Anthony Stewart, I'm not sure. He's a bit animated there with his players. I'm yeah, sure be, if, um, yeah, That was a bit of a rush play then. I'm it, not sure what hmm. he was um, trying to talk to his players about. Yeah, I, mm, it, it looked like a bit of a broken play there towards the end, yeah. Glenn, to, to me, because Geelong had kind of read where they were going and then all of a sudden Hobart got into a bit of a spot of bomber. And had that shot have gone in for Craig Moller, you're like, you know, I'm sure everyone would have been happy, but yeah. you know, the play wasn't as um, textbook as what probably Anthony Stewart wanted it to be. So Geelong restart us as Gatlin brings it down the floor. Court announcer Craig Irons with the chant of defence to the crowd. As Gatlin works it down low to Davis. Davis with that baby hook again. Can't get the go. And last touch off Moller, the referee's the same. Uh, it looked like there was a bit of contact there. Moller's asked the question. However, the referee thought that they both, 
you know, contested the ball evenly and it come off Moller. So, you know, again, another consistent call, you could say, from the referees. So, so he, just moves on with it as well. So that's right. Know. So, Hicks. Move it. Now, Gatlin. Back to Hicks. He's open for three, just short on that one. Nichols with the rebound. Nichols coming down the floor here for the Chargers now. He loses it, but gets, gets it back. Masunda, now Muo. Muo goes baseline. Little Euro step by the sounds of it. Moller for the tip. He couldn't get it to go. Muo on the floor as Gatlin brings this one up. There's a Euro step travel almost. <laughs> Just a bit. A bit awkward for me as Mathang Mu um, has, looks like he's hurt his ankle or his knee when he picked the player then. So. Now Med dead for three. That's long. Masunda with the rebound. So Masunda coming down the floor here. Scott. And he's a very smart player, like you know, he'll hold it off and get it, get the ball to the to the right player. And now and that's uh that's a foul on Hicks. <laughs> he did reach around. He I, did. Yeah, I, again now it's an unsportsmanlike, so what was that? Well, I missed that. It would be so they've upgraded to a unsportsmanlike foul. It, I think what they're saying there, Glenn, is that he didn't go for the ball. Go for the ball. So it's just one of those kind of reckless kind of... So he's grabbed his arm over the top. Yeah, which can be quite da dangerous. So it's a fair call from the referees. And again, he didn't complain. So he knew it was sort of the, like, you know, that yep. he did that probably outside of the normal foul procedure. The other thing too is Hobart has such a good record at home like you know they, they do they, they don't want to lose any games at home i think you know over a three-year period they've probably lost three two or three games i think mm. so you know so they they pride themselves on winning these home games so you know and they right to the like, even if it's yeah, they're back in the game now yeah four go. points there glenn 86 82 they don't want to lose at home and teams know that when they come here that you know, the record you know the records there that, that Hobart has uh, so if they come away from a victory in Hobart, teams are very, very happy. Uh, uh, absolutely, well, yeah, it's always a big bonus uh, for any of the mainland teams that can get a win here. Uh, not many have done it over the last few years. And it's been a fortress. Thunder, yep, and Northwest Thunder as well. Like, you know, they, they're a class team. And, um, like, you know, so this road trip, so it's, I wouldn't say it's quite as terrorising or as stressful as what the old Perth Wildcats Adelaide 36 oh, and Doomsday Double Doomsday was, Double, but, yeah. But, oh, it's yeah. Really, but it's really like, you know, the way that the Hobart teams and the North West teams are, are playing and they've done over the last few years is that like, you know, it's one of those trips where teams, they'd love to play, they love to play in Tasmania. Yeah. However, they know that it's going to be damn hard to try and get a win or at least at least one win. Let That's alone right, two, yeah. So. Um, you know, so yeah, so four points here, a minute to go. Nathan Herbert's not in the court for for Geelong, so that's a big loss for them, especially down yeah. the stretch. Like you know, he's a he's mm. a player that can, you know, you put him in this situation, and this is where he's big time, as he's been all the game. But you want someone of his caliber to be on the court um, for Hobart. Like you know, they've still got Moller, who Nichols, who. And you know, Nichols can win the game off his off his off pressure pressure plays any time. So I think Moller Moller and Nichols will really try and um, be a massive part of Hobart's run for the next for the next minute. All right, Nichols kicks it out. Muo for three. Yeah. Yes, Mafang Muo with the three, and it brings Hobart back to him with a single point. 86-85 as the whistle goes off in the background for the wet spot. Great assist there by Trey Nichols again. As we said, he was going to be involved in that play, whether he shot it or passed it. And the thing Moo looks like he's, um, he's, he's really hurt himself. Uh, probably a couple of games, plays before this, he uh, hurt himself. But I think he asked for a foul on that three-point shot as well. Yeah. But that wasn't to be. So to another timeout being called here. And... And I did say before yep. in the game that, like, you know, if Hobart, when, when Hobart, uh, it's coming down the stretch, they want they want to get the ball, you know, they want to get Mathang Moo, the ball in his hand for an open shot. So that was yeah. a great play from Trey Nichols there to get him open. And it's going to be good to see how Geelong respond to this now. Absolutely. It's a one-point game, like, you know, um, the, crowd's, the crowd's very vocal as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so it could go either way, so I'm really looking forward to 
this is uh, the Lakers. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> the he's back. Yes, he's back. I don't know what happened to him <laughs> earlier, but he's back. And um, Geelong have decided to advance the ball to three quarter court there and um, uh, into sorry into their front court and. They'll take they'll take possession. So what have we got left? We've got it's forty three point one. We've got at least three possess two two to three possessions left. Yeah, let's say three three possessions left in this mm. game. So you know the coaches there at the great timeouts just to see if they can execute what the coaches have asked them to do. On both sides. Craig Irons on the microphone. Yeah, really he's, pumping, up the he's pumping them up like no tomorrow, Glenn. So he, let's see what Shalong can come out with in this possession. Gatlin goes solo, and a travel was called. He did travel, uh, did dribble into traffic, and Hobart get it back. Yeah, I'm not sure how the travel, how, how well, whether it was a travel, it could have been a charge. Mm. Like, you know, he really, um, Craig Moller put, you know, sent, sent him that way and the defensive players right in front of him so in hindsight a travel might have been a good call I'm not sure what better is in foul trouble or not then so uh, but the coach obviously wasn't happy with the, with the turnover. No, coach Leon O'Neill would not be happy with how that was executed so especially after having a timeout just before That's that right, well that's time. right so, yeah. but again it makes for, for a more exciting 35 seconds or whatever Yes, 35 is, to so. go Glenn and uh, a score here from the Chargers in this possession would see them take the lead for the first time in quite a long time. Yeah, that's exactly right. They really, you know, it'd be interesting to see when they when Hobart had the lead. It must have been back, would have been if, back if in the first all, quarter. The first probably play. <laughs> Just thinking about it, because Geelong really came out yeah, of the blocks early. They did. They? So I think this might be the, the first time Hobart do take the lead if they get a score on this possession. And the good thing is, like for both teams, they're not going to get, you know, too nervous. There's still plenty of time left on the clock. Like That's 35 right. seconds is people don't, uh, people, fans don't really, I suppose people that play the game, yeah, they know how long that is. Fans think, oh, there's not yeah. long to go, but like, you know, this is, this is why the players get paid. Absolutely. The big, dollars, the big dollars in certain leagues. You know, Absolutely. As well, so. Moller is going for three and gets it to go. Craig Moller. With a three-pointer and Hobart take the lead for the first time in the game and comes at the right time. Geelong call time out and Hobart up by two. And that's why Craig Mollis is a deal player. Like, you know, he's just fantastic under pressure and like, you know, that play of Anthony Stewart set a, a, a great play for that to happen and uh, you know, good, good play again by Trey Nichols. It did look like when, when Moller let that go, he knew it was going in, especially that from, our, good. from our angle. Uh, we were right behind mm. it, so... Yeah, but it's now, it, it's Hobart at this foul trouble, I believe. So um, if Hobart foul, they're going to put Geelong at the line. So it's going to be interesting again from Leon O'Neill as to what he, what he gets his trips to to do. So last last time it didn't work out through no fault of his, um, but he'll be putting a good play in, in place here. One quick basket. They don't need a three. They just need to get a two. Tie it up. And uh, well, you know, let, I'm hoping it goes to overtime now. So it's been a, a ripper Absolutely, of the game. yeah. No, it's been a great game all the way through, Glenn, and a good one to pick out in uh, from the 2018 archives here to bring this one for a flashback Friday game. Yeah, and I think the probably the biggest thing that we've, we've talked about, Nathan Hurd, and I'm sorry we've gone on about him, but his impact in this game has been really good. That since he's gone off the court, mm. the tide the tide has changed. Yeah, you know, so really, uh, and he's. We, we did say, is this going to happen? And um, mm. it, it obviously, he, his his fifth hour has had a massive impact on, on the on the turnaround of the game. And you know, Hobart taking the momentum and now the lead. And ball got deflected. Moller saying it was last touch by the Super Cats, but Moller's case will fall on deaf ears there. So Geelong will try to inbound it once again. So Rocky. Now Gatlin with it, so Gatlin works his way. Davis, good oh, fake, big, big, block, big block by Zach, Zach White. White. Great and, work. And that's why Zach White, like, you know, he, he's been a fantastic import for the Hobart Chargers. And, you know, he, 
as we, we sort of talk about, he doesn't get massive numbers, but he just gets consistent numbers, and he just does every That's probably his third block for the night, I reckon. Yep. Yep. Say, I'll chase that. that up for you, Glenn. Hang on. Two or three, yeah, but really big blocks at really big times. And, you know, there's no better time than, than that for, for your import to do to four blocks. So, uh, you know, that, so that's great, great work from Zach White. And, yeah. Craig Moller, like, you know, is able to get down at the other end. He's just hit a, th a big three-pointer to get Hobart up by two. And now he's just about to hit. They're now at a three-point three Three-point lead. lead. Hoping to make it four, four and one. does. Yeah, so that team work, it's, yeah, defense is... I think Hobart's defensive games really help them that, um, to, to take this on rather than the offensive defense has been fantastic this last quarter. I've stepped up. Davis and goes for the three. Unlucky. And, and foul. foul there as Moller got... Uh, sorry, Seg White got hit in the head. Yeah. And Trey Nichols is pumping up this crowd. Oh, he's loving it, folks. And so they should be. A great, uh, and I think we could nearly call this game if um, Zach White can ice these free throws. I think we can call game here, Glenn. Absolutely. And uh, mm. I just think that the players, all the, all the Hobart players, have stepped up a lot. But I, I would also like to give credit to the um, Geelong, Geelong team. They, they've put up a great a yeah. great game. And it's just unlucky that they're their most experienced yeah, their NBL player, yeah, unfortunately, was fouled off. Mm. Uh, and that, that really turned the game, so. That completes a 10-0 run. And Geelong have not scored within the last few minutes of this ball game, And Hobart have just absolutely um, put the uh, clamps on the Supercats here. As Gatlin will need to put up uh, Hail Mary here, here to get a score. That's short. Buster goes off in the background, and Hobart get a come from behind win, 92 to 86. Well, that was a, that was a fantastic game, as we said from both teams. And I, I just think that you know the coaching staff of Anthony Stewart, Nathan Berrigan, and Matt Matt Bennell, and yep. obviously Brendan Stanwix is there as well. Um, yeah, they they talk, they must have talked half time about the defensive pressure wasn't good enough, and we have to lift and lift and lift. And Anthony Stewart was still talking to the players in the third quarter as Nathan Berriton was, and you know it finally clicked. You know they they had Nathan Herbert in foul trouble, and yeah, you know, they got him out of the game, and then you know, the momentum swung Hobart's way. But there was a lot of contributors from both teams, and I just think you know Craig Moller sort of finished finished off with a big last quarter, but it was such a good team effort from both teams. So there can only be one winner. That's right, Glenn. Uh, and I think that, you know, Hobart, you know, really, you know, they deserved that win. But in saying that, Geelong had the had the lead for 95, 98% of the game. Yeah, they so, did. And, yeah. uh, you know, what a, what a great team they are. And, well, both teams are really well coached. And, yeah, let's look forward to Geelong coming back in 2021 to have another crack at the charges. Yeah, and they'll have a... <laughs> the way and the and the way they were looking with their team for this season coming up, they were looking quite good as well too. So I'm interested to see who does come back. Let's go through some of the scoring for you. Let's have a look at the stats anyway. Uh, Nathan Herbert led the way for the SuperCats, 18 points, uh, along with th uh, four uh, four rebounds and two assists. And then next best was um, Demarcus Gatlin with 15 points and uh, four rebounds. And then they had four players in double figures. Jeremy Meddead had a good game as well too. He had 13 points. And then uh, John Davis also had 11 points. For the Hobart Chargers, Craig Moller with 22 points and 13 rebounds. A good double-double by him. But, uh, Trey Nichols had 18 points and 11 assists. There, Glenn. And a few missed assists as well. And a few missed assists. <laughs> Mafang Muir had 20 points and nine rebounds. He nearly got a double-double in that game. And Zach White, who come up big there on the last uh, uh, last defensive play, 11 points and four blocks as well too. So a good all-round effort by both teams. And really, in the end, it, it come to look like to me, I mean, if I look at the statistics here, Glenn, just by looking at, well, Geelong had 21 turnovers and um, Hobart had 15, uh, but Hobart had 18 assists compared to six assists here to Geelong. And then if you want to keep breaking it down, um, 
Oh, just having a quick now look a at the field one, though, goal here. Yeah, field goal, I mean, 43. Hobart shot at 43% from the field. Geelong with 36 point, uh, 36% from the field. So, um, uh, But interesting enough, though, uh, Geelong out-rebounded Hobart uh, 52-47. So uh, some interesting stats there, uh, stats there, Glenn. But I think it's the assist that really take it out. There, as as far as the difference is concerned, yeah. And Trey Nichols, you know, he he really got the ball to to the open player. Like you know, um, Mathang Mu got a couple of really good passes. Like you know, he he worked he worked hard inside, and the defense was great. And he missed a few shots, but then when he was able to get up, you know, the ball from when Trey Nichols drove in, you know, he's able to get open and he knocks those shots down. So, but I uh, I thought yeah, Zach White's four blocks were were really valuable, and uh, Moller, obviously a double-double with 22 and 13, was was good, but I, I really like the intensity of, of the, some of the subs were really good, they might not have put big numbers on, but mm-hmm. just, just I thought Cam Brown did a really good job yep. for Hobart as well, and um, you know, for for Geelong, I thought the first of Demarcus Gatlin had a really good, probably first three quarters and sort of um, went a bit quiet, John Davis was yeah, did his best. He missed a couple later on in the game, but yeah. like you know, Rock, Rocky was tough. They're mm. all Marlo Marlo Hicks. So I thought I thought credit to both teams really, and uh, I just think that Hobart. It's just such a tough venue to come into. Herbert Absolutely. Herbert got fouled out, and once he got fouled out, the momentum obviously turned, and yeah. uh, it's just such a big loss to lose a, a former NBL player. Uh, you know, down mm. the stretch when you know he'd played such a good game already. Uh, the thoughts there from Glenn Fairfield, and uh, great to have Glenn once again with us on commentary. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this Flashback Friday game. We'll do another one later down the track, depending on everyone's availability, of course. I think we're trying to get JB back in um, into the broadcast booth as well, too, Ram for this band. game. Thank you, man. Yes, a few people. Pe- <laughs> few, yes, few people are missing that. So we'll try to get JB um, in the studios for, for the next game that we that we do um, but for now we'll, we'll wrap it up here on behalf of Glenn Fairfield and myself and the entire hard working crew here at Chargers TV uh, we'll catch you again next time